So, Jermaine, how about you first start by telling us a bit about who you sell, who you are, uh, what makes you special compared to other people? Okay, so a little about myself and uh, who I am and what makes me special. So I am originally from the island of Jamaica. And, you know, as, as you know, Jamaica has a very rich uh, music culture, you know, primarily with dancehall and reggae, you know, more popular genres, you know, but used to have genres like uh, rock steady, you know, and a lot of these genres have, you know, gone on to influence other genres. So, you know, I, I grew up in that musical environment, um, but I also didn't limit myself to Jamaican music. You know, I grew up listening a lot of country music, like Kenny Rogers, you know, um, like, you know, in Jamaica, a lot of people wouldn't necessarily um, guess this, but like Sundays is really like country music days. Um, and older country, as I say, like Kenny Rogers and, and prior to him, right? Not so much the, the, the modern country music. Um, so I grew up on that. Uh, I've always liked performing, uh, singing. I grew up singing uh, in my school choir and also in church. So, uh, you know, my musical background is, is, is very, very diverse. And I think that actually shows itself in my in my writing and how I approach music. You know, I think I am unique in how I approach music in terms of, I, I don't see myself being limited to any specific genre. Um, I've written maybe, I don't know, over 50 songs within within the last year and they range from country to like soft rock to dance or hip hop um, and I'm even trying to to mix some genres together so yeah I think I think just my the way I approach music is very genreless and a genre bending as 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 well Yeah, so <laughs> how would I classify my music? As I said, it, it, it's, it, it's very hard because so far, you know, the, in terms of the music that I've recorded and published, you know, I, I've, I have quite a few dancehall tracks, um, but I've, uh, my first song that I published was a hip hop song. And I've also experimented with, with some friends in EDM you know, so electronic music. So it's really hard to define. I, I think my music is, is really determined by, you know, the mood that, I, that I'm in at, at any given time. But I also am very intentional in terms of my lyrics and especially with my dancehall songs and also my hip hop songs. You know, a lot of my, my Music is very, is almost like social commentary, right? So, you know, if you listen to "I Can't Breathe," which is the hip hop song that I that I did around the time of uh, the murder of, of George Floyd and the protest movement um, that developed around that, you know, the, the lyrics are, you know, are, are very, they can be very touching, very deep, you know, depending on how close you are to the subject matter. Um, for my dancehall songs, a lot of them touch on the issue of like gang violence and you know um issue issues surrounding that you know like political corruption you know um misguided youth um so I, I i write about a lot of serious topics but i also like to have fun and if you listen to my edm song you know let go it's a very you know catchy more fun song about having fun during the summer i also did a song called summer of love um, which is also a more fun, relaxing song. So, you know, I, I try to go on a wide spectrum, you know, and try to write music that speaks to the entire human experience, you know, not just serious stuff and not just fun stuff. So based off that conversation about your social commentary in music, and also based on the fact of your background, how you're quite obviously a teacher as well. Why is that social commentary important for youth in music? 
Yeah, social commentary in music is extremely important uh, to me. Um, yes, I think my background as a teacher has a lot to do with that. I started making music because of also the encouragement that I received from my students while teaching um, at Dene High in Laloche in Northern Saskatchewan, right? Um, and I also really thought about how in tune my students were with music and how hard it was to get them away from music, even in class. You know, I, I, I have to keep, you know, saying to students, you know, turn off your, turn off your music, give me your phone, you know, and the, the moment they have free time, they're always listening to music, you know, and I found that a lot of the music that they were gravitating to or listening to was not music that I thought was edifying, was not music that I thought, you know, um, would teach them anything, you know, and so I was very concerned that the majority of music that they were consuming was in fact, you know, um, could be detrimental to, the, to their mindset and how they, you know, how they, they see the world. And so I thought it was important to inject, you know, music into the space that they could actually learn something from or that will give them a different perspective than you know music that promote violence or you know pro promiscuity or whatever else you know um, is in the content that they are consuming so i wanted to give an alternative to that yeah and by sounds of it it seems like music is um a very clear in to really get on the sides of students and in general youth yeah. at the time right now yeah i would agree with that i think that you know, music is something that, you know, especially junior youth, it, it, it speaks to you deeper than almost any anything else or almost anyone else. You know, um, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you teenagers are sad, you know, they have their playlist that they go through that, that really gets them through that, 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 you know, that experience, you know, and we all know that, you know, teenagers have, you know, more emotional volatility than probably any other age, you know, uh, and so music plays a, a large role in getting them through those different types of emotions and dealing and coping with those types of emotions. And so, you know, I, I, as a teacher, I want to make sure that, you know, um, I'm also, as I said, adding to the mix an alternative to a lot of what is now mainstream music, you know, and, and the themes that you know, uh, that comes with mainstream music, which oftentimes can be very narrow, especially if you find yourself listening to just one or two genres, right? The themes can get very narrow because, you know, people like to replicate what is selling, what is popular. Um, and so, you know, an another reason for me in trying to connect with students is, is also to show them that, hey, you know, anybody can do it. You know, I'm your teacher and I don't really have any serious training in music. Yes, I grew up singing in church and in choir um, and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I don't really have any serious theoretical, you know, uh, music background, you know. Uh, but here I am, you know, writing and express, expressing myself because I really see music as, you know, um, just another means of expression. And as humans, we all have something to express. We all have a story to tell. And I'm telling my stories through music and I, I'm trying to encourage my students to do the same, even if it's through a different medium. Yeah, and it sounds like you just want to provide, like you like mentioned, the alternative um, option exactly. for students. Um, you mentioned it earlier how um, anyone can do it how like regardless of your background it's it is possible um with that in mind what are some challenges with being an independent artist oh yes the challenges of being an independent artist are many um as i said when i when i first went to the studio i had no idea what i needed to do um i was just walking into this experience 
you know, hoping that I would have an engineer or a producer to really guide me because I was like, ah, I'm not certain, you know, do I sing any differently from when I'm on stage? You know, um, I, I didn't know any of these things, you know, and so it was, it was, it was very intimidating at first, you know, um, going into the studio with people who, you know, are professionals and who do this for a living. You know, it was, it was very nerve wracking at first, but as with anything else, you know, I feel like I've gotten better with experience. Um, also figuring how how to navigate publishing your music right now that you've gone to the studio you've recorded your song you've had the producer mix and master it how do you get it out right um, luckily you know there are distributors like you know DistroKid which I use um, you know and so you know once I found that you know I realized that oh okay it's not as hard as I thought in terms of getting my music published because you upload it to DistroKid and they, you know, put it on all the mainstream platforms, right? So, you know, I realized that, okay, this works. Um, I, I think probably the biggest challenge for an artist just coming into the business is just the cost to create music, especially if you don't um, have the ability to create it by yourself from start to finish, right? There's some people, you know, who control the entire production process, right? They write their songs, they make their beats, they mix and master them and then publish them. You know, if you're able to do that, good, good, good job, right? I, 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 I write, I'm a prolific writer, you know, that's my strong point. I also sing, um, you know, so those are things that I do on my own, but in terms of like producing a beat or mixing and mastering, I really have a, a, a limited knowledge in that in that space. So I usually go to the experts and get them to do it. And if you're doing it that way, it's gonna cost, right? So to create one song, you know, um, can really cost you anywhere between, and this is from the lower end, you know, 250 to $300 a song, right? And so that is expensive. You know, and as an upcoming artist, you're not really getting a lot of shows or you're not really streaming in any high numbers to where you're making, where you're breaking even, you know. So the, the startup costs can be daunting, you know. Um, but as I said, there are ways to try to um, reduce that cost, you know, trying to work with producers who are also up and coming, um, you know, could reduce the cost. You know, trying to learn those skills of, of, of making the beat and also doing the production side of things will help to eliminate some of those costs, you know, and, 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 and um, learning about shows and, 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 and learning how to, you know, um, promote yourself, right? That is another part of the whole music scene that I'm learning uh, how to navigate, you know, how to, um, you know, find means to get my music out here because you could have the best song in the world you know as an upcoming independent artist but if you don't know how to promote it you know the rest of the world will never hear it you know so those are some of the challenges oh yeah changes changes in the music industry some of the changes that I'd like to see is um, if there could be different rates, like I think uh, for a lot of upcoming artists, as I said, and especially younger artists who don't have a lot of money to help to help them, you know, um, promote themselves or to create their music, that you know, um, that producers can understand that reality, and you know, the cost of creating isn't so high. You know, or maybe there's some grants that, you know, artists can can obtain, you know, to, to help create their music, you know, um, or I'm certain there's some already, but more widely accessible, you know, for um, upcoming artists, you know, because the, the cost can be very prohibitive, you know, because uh, I've seen a lot of young guys who have real talent and who are trying to come up, you know, but 
you know, they, they don't have that money to be spending $300 on a song, you know. So, you know, if there could be some more understanding either from producers where, you know, um, they, 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 they take a, a young talent who is coming up and who's trying to, to get in and maybe have some, you know, uh, cost sharing arrangement, you know, and especially videos that's another cost because i you know most people consume music through videos today right so i didn't even touch on, on that topic so yeah you could have the best song in the world and you produce it and you're trying to promote it but if you don't have some visuals to go with it that's also gonna hurt how far your your, your song goes you know and um the cost of putting out a video is it's pretty steep it's pretty steep so i don't know maybe there can be some form of body that is created or somebody that body that exists already can like you know build some type of uh, database where you know upcoming artists and upcoming um, videographers and upcoming producers can all just link up and um, you know create art together create good music together create good visuals together you know, um, but as I said, for somebody who is new to the space and don't know a videographer, don't know a photographer, don't know a producer, you know, um, it, it can really be discouraging trying to put all of those pieces together to create the best um, work possible. Yeah, that sounds a lot like um, the directory with like SAS music we have, where you just like have all like video videographers and musicians coming up. So yeah, that's definitely a good resource that we could yeah. use more in the province. Um, so with your experience as both a musician and as a teacher, uh, one of the main topics, of course, with Black History Month, um, mm -hmm. how can we better educate youth about Black history? Yeah, black. Yeah, it's Black History Month, and yeah, the question is, how can we better edu educate youth about Black history? Um, there's so much more to understand about Black history um, than you know what is out there in the popular culture. I think even from an education standpoint, that there's a lot of gaps within the curriculum as far as black history is concerned and how black history is taught. Um, I'm a historian as well. I, I also have a degree in history. Um, and, you know, so I spend a lot of time studying African history. And, you know, African history is as ancient as, as it gets. You know, Africa is, is where, you know, if you believe the science humanity evolved from you know so the history goes back as, as ancient as it can get you know um one thing i realized with you know um having studied in the u.s and also studied um in canada and even studying in jamaica is that um, a lot of how black history is taught starts from slavery and you know to me that's that's very unfortunate and it also creates a very tainted picture of what black history is um because black history as i said goes back way back into ancient egypt ancient nubia right um you know timbuktu and a lot of the ancient empires also in, in west africa right um so it, it runs very deep and I think one of the things that we can do in terms of trying to expand and improve upon how we educate people about black history is to remove that starting point from uh, slavery and going back into ancient history and learning about all the great achievements that were made um, in Africa and the African contributions to world history. I think that's really how you know, we, we, we start um, expanding people's minds and expanding their understanding um, of African history and, and uh, African people. Great. And uh, just to finish off, whether it be to youth in a province, whether it be to 
upcoming musicians. Uh, what do you have like a last message that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, so that's a very good good question. You know, a, a message. What message do I have for the youth, um, upcoming youth who want to get into to music? Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. It's it's very simple, very direct, straight to the point. Just do it. If this is something that you feel, you know, called to do, just do it. Don't listen to the naysayers, you know, um, the detractors, and there will be many. You know, I have a few myself, you know, and I think, you know, no matter who the person is, you know, I'm certain Drake had a few himself too, you know, when he was starting out. Everybody has it, you know, uh, but if you believe within your heart that this is, you know, what you were called to do, just do it. You know, um, don't let anything stop you, right? Yes, I know um, there is a cost to, to, to publishing music. You know, um, find people who you can work with to kind of, you know, um, find ways to subsidize that cost. You know, but, but don't let anything turn you off from, you know, expressing yourself. Because in, in my worldview, in my philosophy, you know, um, creativity is... Is, is, is the the greatest thing you know it's it's, it's the greatest um, thing that anybody could do right create right um, so I would tell any upcoming uh, artists who want to get into music don't listen to the naysay naysayers don't listen to the, the, the voices in your head telling you you know you're not good enough you know quiet those voices dispel those voices by doing it and just keep improving on your art as you go along. Great, thanks for uh, coming and talking to me about these topics today, Jermaine. Um, do you have any new singles coming out? Any new music on the way? Uh, thank you for that question, Casey. Yes, I have new music coming out. I'm really hoping to put out an, uh, my first album this year. I know um, these days we don't talk a lot about albums, you know, because it's the age of the singles, you know, and um, quite a few of the singles that I've already produced, I'm hoping to also put on my album. Um, the album uh, will be a dancehall album, so you know, it, it, it's it's uh, it, it's mainly targeted towards that uh, community. Um, but I'm hoping to also branch out more and show and show a bit more of my versatility and my range in terms of. Um, the music that I'm hoping to put out this year. So once I have, you know, um, finished most of the work on my dance uh, uh, album, I want to start putting out some of my country music, right? I have a country song and this song is really the song that has gotten the most interest from people that I've shared it with. Of all my music, people always come back to this one country song that I have done. Um, but that I've not put out as yet. So I'm really excited for when I put it out to see the response, especially in Saskatchewan and Alberta and the prairies where, you know, the country music scene is, is the biggest in Canada, right? Um, I'm, I also have a, a few love ballads that, I, that I'm looking to put out as well, you know, and, and just, you know, I think a lot of people are just going to be surprised, especially people who have been following my, my musical journey so far. I, I have some hip hop songs too, right? I, I've already put one out, but um, I have a, a, a few more to come and I think they're definitely gonna catch people's ears. Um, but in terms of music that I have coming out in short order, uh, I have a few more dancehall tracks uh, coming um, that I'm excited about. So yeah, keep looking out for those and uh, follow me you know, on my social media, I'm on YouTube, yeah, Spotify, all the main streaming platforms, you know, um, and I'm also on Twitter and Instagram, you know, just, yeah. So if you're interested in checking my, my story out, yeah, go, go follow me and I'm certain you'll find something you like. Cause as I said, I'm making music for, uh, you know, across different genres and across a wide range of subject matter. Yeah, I look forward to uh, hearing them. Thanks so much for uh, coming to talk with me. Thank you, Casey. Thanks for having me. I really um, appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you and to, 
you know, um, having this 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 level of engagement uh, with you know SAS SAS music, you know, um, thanks very much for this opportunity, um, and I I hope. In the future, we'll have more time to interact and talk about my music as I continue on this journey.